It's time for the Rick Smith Show. Now, here is the voice of the working class, Rick Smith. So, President Biden was out and about. So, Monday signs the $1.2 trillion infrastructure investment and Jobs Act into law. Going to rebuild some of our roads, our bridges, stuff like that, our infrastructure, you know, the uh, the electric grid, railroad, transport, public, all that, all that good stuff. Uh, Tuesday, he's out in, uh, what is it, Woodbridge, New Hampshire, checking a look at a, a falling down, crumbling bridge, going to Detroit on Wednesday, and soon coming to a crumbling disaster uh, near you. And I think he should stay on the road because we got tons of bridges, tons of things that need to be rebuilt. He should be on the road with the little hat and the golden shovel saying, we're rebuilding stuff. We're making lives better. And here to share some thoughts on, well, you know, just how important this infrastructure bill is. I've asked our good friend Scott Paul to come talk with us. Scott is the president of the Alliance for American Manufacturing, AmericanManufacturing.org, their website. Scott, thanks for taking time for us. Hey, Rick, it is uh, so good to be with you tonight. So out and about, uh, get out of the White House, get out of D.C., get to middle America and say, we're building stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's the right move. First of all, it's a major achievement to get a $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill across the finish line. Um, Many presidents have talked about it. Uh, Joe Biden delivered. Um, and it's pretty impressive. And, you know, there were Republicans who came along uh, with uh, the, the vast, vast majority of, uh, of Democrats on this. Um, and Rick, I'm glad you mentioned going out and about because I think that's key. When you get to the local level, infrastructure is not as partisan, right? Because, uh, you know, whether you're a Republican mayor or a Democratic mayor, you need to provide good water service. You need uh, good transit systems if you're in a community big enough. Um, people depend on that and, um, and and on down. And so I think it is very, very good for Biden to be heading to areas where there is a need and where the infrastructure bill will help to meet that need. And the good news for Joe Biden is that he'll be able to travel far and wide Uh, to make these points because it's bridges, it's roads, it's water systems, it's broadband, it's school construction, it's electric vehicle charging infrastructure. Um, It's, you know, it's some clean energy stuff. There's there's a ton of stuff in this bill that is going to help America uh, from Hawaii and Alaska to Maine and Florida. Uh, It is a uh, again, we're excited about the possibilities, and obviously there's a lot in there for construction jobs, for manufacturing jobs, for people who are just commuting to and from work, uh, and for everyday citizens who depend on uh, access to broadband, access to clean water, uh, things that we too, all too often take for granted uh, until they're not working. Yeah, as I was explaining to uh, someone recently, this is going to help rural America probably more than anywhere else, especially when you're talking about broadband access, uh, because we desperately need it. There are communities across this country in rural areas where, you know, the best thing, you're the only Internet you're getting is, you know, something maybe out of the sky via satellite because there aren't wires, there aren't towers, there's nothing. And this does a, a huge a huge step in getting that access to people in, in rural communities. You know, the people who voted against them. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's uh, they're, they're going to be grateful to have uh, high speed Internet and it's going to help with education. It's going to help with uh, small businesses, uh, helping them to grow. Uh, it's going to help the agricultural community. Um, it, it's going to help those Main Street businesses in small town America. Um, and it's going to be an equalizer uh, because right now, again, I'm in a metropolitan area. We just take it for granted uh, that we're going to have high-speed broadband, but there is a significant portion of America, uh, and and Rick, you're right to point out, much of it is rural. There are also underserved urban communities as well, but much of it is rural uh, that will gain a a huge boost. And one of the things I liked uh, that that I think is underreported here is that obviously we all see the roads and bridges. We kind of know what that stuff is made out of, right? It's made out of steel. It's made out of concrete, rebar, all of that. 
Well, broadband, you know, you need fiber optic cable for that. And so uh, the president uh, at the signing ceremony had a steel worker uh, who works at uh, Corning in North Carolina. And guess what? They make fiber optic cable and their books are going to be busy, busy for uh, years to come. Uh, and they're going to be growing and expanding. Uh, and there's going to be huge opportunities uh, because they're going to be the ones who help to connect America. No, no, and this for me, the you know the the part of this is yeah, we're going to be rebuilding the country, but with an emphasis on on using American-made steel and and concrete and the things that go into this. You know, we're not going to you know we're not going to make China richer by having them rebuild our our infrastructure. And I always point to that bridge out in California that's never going to get yeah. done. That ended up costing you know way more than it was supposed to, uh, and they used you know you know cheap labor and you get what you get. That's right. Yeah, and, and the great thing about this is that for the first time, uh, and, and there's still some work to do, but for the first time, uh, those Buy America requirements, which means that these projects, uh, they're going to be uh, put into place by state and local governments. If they have that federal money from this infrastructure bill, whether it's broadband or water systems or transit or bridges and roads, it's going to have to have iron, steel, manufactured goods, that are made in America. And so that's, you know, in that $1.2 trillion worth of spending, uh, that's gonna mean tremendous opportunities for blue collar jobs, uh, for uh, American factories who I know are ready to, to supply uh, the United States. I mean, the steel workers and other unions made a big point about this over the summer uh, that look, we can supply America. All we need is a chance uh, to do this. Uh, and, and so I am really, really happy uh, that this provision in particular got huge bipartisan support. In the Senate, Rick, it was Senator Sherrod Brown uh, and Senator Rob Portman, both from Ohio, who helped to ensure uh, that there were these Buy America provisions in the bill, but they had broad support throughout the Congress. Uh, and so again, Joe Biden's not only going to be an infrastructure president he's going to be a buy america president as well a uh, jobs president because you know as the one report i saw uh, mark zandy from moody analytics is saying uh upwards of six hundred and sixty thousand jobs uh created over the next couple of years i've seen reports higher uh, but he seems to be at the low end so i'm going a minimum of six hundred and sixty thousand, potentially a couple million uh this is a good this is a good thing yeah it is and this has lasting benefits. This is the great thing. I mean, obviously, it is a short-term boost for construction, for installation, for the materials. Over the long run, it makes our economy more efficient. That means that we're able to invest more capital in productive things down the road. It's going to help with growth. Uh, that should boost wages as well. And so this is going to be a win for American workers, uh, American businesses, uh, for decades to come when we're making these investments. And, and it's worth pointing out that for the first time, because of this infrastructure bill, we will be uh, increasing our infrastructure investment at a faster rate than China for the first time in more than two decades. So this is how you compete. This no. is how you get it done. And stuff, stuff we've been talking about now for, well, <laughs> almost two decades. Uh, the need to have this kind of investment simply to compete. Now, in this is you know a commitment to moving towards you know building more electric vehicle charging stations because the future is electric vehicles. And I was just reading through an op-ed over at the New York Times that basically you know asked the question: Are we ready? Uh, they were saying we're we're not ready because we we can't produce a lot of this stuff. Um, you know, is, is I guess are we at the beginning of something we're not going to be able to to finish through on? Well, look, I think that's why a sustained investment is going to be important. So th we've begun the work. We need to finish it as well. That's why I think some of these clean energy investments uh, in the uh, Build Back Better bill uh, that, that's still to come are vitally important because the one time shot in the arm that we tried during the Great Recession just didn't work. You need that sustained investment to make it happen. Uh, and, and it's critical. Uh, we need that investment because right now China has the market cornered. Uh, about 90 percent of global capacity to uh, process lithium. They have 70 percent for cobalt, 40 percent for nickel, 
almost all of it for graphite. And the reason why I'm raising all of these obscure materials is because they are crucial to making these batteries uh, that go into electric vehicles, electric buses, uh, you know, that, that are going to be powering our future. And, and we know this is going to happen. I mean, you saw the, the excitement about the, uh, the IPO for Rivian. Um, or the excitement when Ford made an announcement. I know, you know, one of the reasons why Biden is going to Michigan is he's going to tout GM's investment in electric vehicles as well. So this is happening. Uh, and it's just a question of where these are going to be made. And if we invest that money, we're going to make sure that those batteries aren't coming from China, but are coming from factories here in the United States, uh, which I think is going to make this a more effective plan as we move forward. Which is interesting because, you know, you know, President Biden's got to take on China on some level where past presidents, you know, have, have given some rhetoric and have not been able to follow through or do anything. Uh, Biden's in a position because of this to actually make some some concrete gains. And I know today was the big virtual meeting. So I wanted to yeah. get your thoughts on, on on what the outcome of the big virtual meeting was. Yeah, I, first of all, I can't imagine being on something like Zoom for three hours uh, with all that translation. That's just uh, that, that's pretty tedious. But uh, this came at an important time. Um, there's a lot of issues that Biden and Xi have to cover, and they range from uh, Taiwan, uh, where, there, where there are deep concerns about China's intentions there, to the oppression in Hong Kong. Uh, to the Tibetan people, to the Uyghur people, uh, which I understand Biden raised all of those issues to his great credit uh, with Xi, which is something that Trump never would have done, actually. And, and so I think that's very important that Biden was able to do that. He also said, apparently, that he expects China to abide by the commitments it made on its last trade deal uh, negotiated in the last administration, because it hasn't so far. Uh, it, it's it's underbought uh, you know, what it was supposed to do. Uh, and that, uh, you know, and so I think it's important that they keep these conversations going, but, but that Biden needs to be very honest about what the disagreements are, right. uh, which, by the way, our corporations could use a little of that courage, too, because, man, so many of them go out of their way to appease the Chinese Communist Party and Xi Jinping. And they they just shake in their boots. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if 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 they know that there's a president, at least that has the courage to stand up uh, for human rights, the values that we hold dear, dear and wants to make America more competitive, uh, then maybe they'll listen. Rick. They're not there yet, uh, but it's a it, there's a real disconnect. And this is something that separates you know, our competitive challenge against China versus what we faced, you know, a couple decades ago. And, and that's the fact that corporate America is very divided on this. And many of them want to keep doing business in China, uh, even if they have to sacrifice values, even if it means more pollution, even if it means more exploitation of labor, even if it means, uh, you know, leaning into the censorship uh, and abiding by it uh, that the Chinese Communist Party wants. Uh, and so I think that, uh, you know, hopefully Biden can send a message that uh, we got to bring some of this work back to the United States uh, and we'll hold our corporate le leaders accountable there. But we'll also send a message to them that uh, th that he's going to take the relationship with China seriously, deliberately, and is going to stand up to them when he needs to. Um, and, and I think that's that's very important. He's not going to be transactional like Trump was. You never knew which page he was on, right. depending on the day with China. No, the, the uh, thing that's interesting. Talk, yeah. You know, the thing that's interesting to me is I was reading the story over at Reuters, and you know they were talking about how the Chinese embassy is you know using their contacts with CEOs and, and these companies to lobby our to lobby our government against bills that they think are going to be disadvantage you know put them at a disadvantage put us in an advantage where they're lobbying us to not do things that are going to benefit us which is incredible to me and one of the things that they pointed out is this US Innovation and Competition Act that would help us build these semiconductors that we desperately need and I'm going, you know, how screwed up is our system that the Chinese get to lobby our representatives by using corporate America uh, to come put the hammer down? There's something wrong here. Yeah, it's totally wrong. And, and unfortunately, they have the leverage. 
because these companies so over leverage themselves in China, right? I mean, Apple, you, you know, most of its production platform is in China. A lot of these other companies are completely dependent on China, uh, like the retailers uh, in particular, for so many of their products uh, that, that they're just over a barrel. Uh, and, and they went too far. And so the, the embassy, the Chinese Communist Party, has so much leverage over them that, yes, they're willing to speak out against American interests to protect their bottom line uh, because th they made a terrible, terrible deal. That has to unwind. That, ha that definitely has to unwind. And more of this has to be exposed because we do need, I mean, we need that investment in semiconductors. We need to sanction uh, if, if China and there are firms benefiting from forced labor, those products should be banned and those firms should be sanctioned. Uh, and there's no doubt about it. So, so shame on any American company that is acting against American interests and is providing a shield for the Chinese Communist Party uh, for its oppressive uh, behavior. Uh, we, we can't stand for that. And I'm glad that it was exposed. And we're going to try to hold these companies accountable as well. No, no. And I, we need a list of them. And we need people to call. We need email addresses. We need addresses. Uh, we need that. Last bit. Uh, I understand the, the Biden administration is talking about a diplomatic boycott of the Winter Olympics. Is that going to happen? Yeah, well, I hope it does. And I know there's a lot of support on Capitol Hill for that uh, among Democrats and Republicans. Uh, and I think the general attitude is like, look, the athletes have trained for this. Uh, don't stand in their way. Let, let them go. But there doesn't need to be any political cover for Beijing in this. And, and you know what, Rick? I hope the corporations get the message as well, because, you know, you know, you don't want the Olympics to be brought to you by Coca-Cola uh, and Uyghur genocide, which is exactly the situation that it is right now. So, yes, I don't know when Biden's going to make this announcement. I hope it comes soon, and I hope a lot of other countries follow the United States lead here. There you go. Good stuff. As always, Scott, I appreciate the time. Keep up the great work you do at the Alliance for American Manufacturing. Hope folks check out the website, AmericanManufacturing.org. As always, good stuff, my friend. All right, Rick. Great to see you. Thanks for everything you do as well. Thanks so much, Scott Paul, president of the Alliance for American Manufacturing. Make sure you check out their website, AmericanManufacturing.org. Quick break. Right back. Stick around. You'll listen to The Rick Smith Show. And the union gives a voice to win. On The Rick Smith Show. <laughs> 